I'm Amanda, and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Hello, my loves, and welcome to today's episode. Today, I have Ian Garland. If you know him from his YouTube and his Instagram, he is Off Kilter Crafter Ian. He does YouTube live shows where you, you know, you can sew along with him and ask questions and just chat with him in general. He puts out YouTube videos on just different topics and he's a great quilter, a great crafter and puts out such inspirational work. So um, I was just really excited to talk to Ian today. We found out we have so much in common in our professional lives as well as just like the things we like. And so that was really fun. Um, I do want to just note that there is a trigger warning. Um, He mentions that one of his friends um, recently died by suicide. So please take caution when listening, if that is something that you're sensitive to. We both talk about it in the episode, but just a reminder that if you need help or you need somebody to talk to, 988 is a number you can call. Um, It's the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. So 988 is a number that you can call if you need to talk to somebody or if you feel like you need help. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you enjoy our conversation. It was so much fun getting to know Ian, and I hope you love getting to know him as much as I did. Hi, Ian. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah. (laughs) I feel that. I feel that. I understand that very well. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a past situation for people listening now, but um, Taylor Swift's new album dropped this weekend and I have oh not gosh. stopped. Like, I was like, oh my God, Ian's going to be so mad at me because I'm going to be so distracted because all I'm thinking about is Taylor Swift. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I definitely listened to it yesterday. I, I work mm-hmm. from home. And so I definitely put like had a project to work on through my ear pods in and just like I, I first of all, that that two album drop was unexpected. <laughs> like what? Yeah. So because I, I went to bed, I, I went to bed before the album dropped. Oh. And uh, so I was like, okay, Taylor Swift albums came out, you know, all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I open up TikTok and all these reactions are like, there's two albums. I'm like, wait, she what, 31 songs? Mother and, has and, mothered. <laughs> Um, what? did I stay up to listen to the, all of it? Yes, I did. Um, oh my God. Yeah. yeah that was wild. It was, and it the was, clowns, it was really, really good. Yeah. And the clowns were clowning. I mean, <laughs> it was, um, a really fun ride. So anyway, yeah, I just, and like my bestie Miranda is also a huge Swifty. And so we literally, since the drop, cause it was it happened at 10 o'clock here since we're two hours earlier yeah. than Eastern time. So at 10 o'clock, we're both like, okay, ready, poised to click play on Spotify and like listen through the whole thing, whatever. And I was like getting ready to kind of close things up and go to bed because it was late. And then I yeah. looked and there was all of a sudden all these other songs. And I was like, what just, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And she had just sent me a screenshot of like torture post department anthology released another 16 songs. And I was like, oh dear God. Oh no. <laughs> I'm so, so I'm so glad I didn't find it out until the next morning when I could actually, you know, listen to it at a decent hour. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was so good. Anyway, but let's, okay. But let's let's be real. We know who the alchemist is about. Like that's obviously. 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 If it wasn't about anybody else, I would be like, no, you're yeah. a liar. <laughs> yeah. I started listening to that one. And I'm like, okay, like this I know she like tries to hide things but I'm like this is like she should have just come out and said it in this one it's so blatantly obvious and then watch 10 years from now she's going to come out with something else that completely changes her opinions and be like (laughs) oh that wasn't that wasn't about him at all (laughs) oh shoot yeah somebody was like I saw somebody's comment that was like oh baby's first song about him (laughs) Travis (laughs) I was like oh that's funny um anyway okay we can stop talking about Taylor Swift I'm sure listeners are going to be like, what are you talking about? It's fine. (laughs) Anyway, but we're here to get to know you. And um, I have known of you. And I think I even saw you bopping around at QuiltCon because we were both there. Um, And I hadn't met you at the time. So I wasn't going to like walk up and be like, hi, I'm a stranger. (laughs) I could have, but you know. Um, I actually, I, I want people to do that actually, because I know that sometimes it can be really scary, like going up. I I'm, I am very outgoing, but I also do have my very shy moments where I'm like too afraid to talk to people or or anything like that. But I I love 
uh, when people, you know, come up and say hello, even if I've like never met them, even if like, even if they haven't seen my YouTube channel or anything like that, I love talking to people and just meeting people. So I, I wish you had, would have come up to me at QuiltCon, but we're meeting now <laughs> and hopefully are you, uh, hopefully you'll be going to, to next year's QuiltCon in Phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. We can definitely meet then, but I, yeah, I, I always tell my subscribers on my YouTube channel, like, feel free to come up to me, say hello. Like, I'm horrible mm -hmm. with names. I'll forget your name. You'll have to remind me 25 million times what your name is, but I know faces and I recognize faces very easily. So if I've met you before, no, more than likely, I'll, I'll, I'll recognize you from, from your face. So you'll just yeah. have to tell me your name. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No. And I, I, I think there was a point like, cause I'm, I can be outgoing, but I definitely need some recharge time. Yes. And because that was my first quilt con and I was meeting like so many people that I've had on the show or just that I've been a huge fan of for a long time. I think yeah. I just would like hit a wall at some points and just yeah. be like, I'm going to go say hi to that person. And my energy was just like, absolutely not. You know, it's like, yeah. so anyway, not to belabor that, but um, yeah, it was just so cool seeing so many people and recognizing people too and being like, okay, I know who yeah. that person is. And like, I think when you see somebody online so much, you're not really sure what they're like in person. Cause it's like, I think that's yeah. them, but I, so I think being able to put an actual face to the account that I follow or to the videos yeah. I watch or whatever the content yeah. I engage with, I was like, okay, I feel like I've done that. And then I feel yep. more comfortable reaching out because it's like, I've seen you out in the wild. You yep. know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, and I'm the same. I want people to come say hi. It's not like locally, I'm going to experience that very much, but it was so fun at QuiltCon, like having yeah. the few random, like, non quilters not not non quilters but like not people I've interviewed come up and yeah. be like can I take a selfie or like oh my god I love your podcast I was like what me yeah um I, I definitely had that imposter syndrome during QuiltCon because I went to QuiltCon in um 2022 when it was okay. in Phoenix and that was a lot of fun really enjoyed it um I met um Tiffany from Tiffany's Quilting Life there Mm -hmm. and uh had a great time running around but it wasn't like and I saw a, some of my friends that you know were online and stuff like that um but I don't know it, this year was just different somehow I don't know how being in Raleigh or I, I don't know what it was but it was just different because I guess part of it was my YouTube channel has grown I don't remember what I was in 2022 but I'm almost at 15,000 subscribers right now and so yeah. Like my subscriber base is is bigger, and so I get a little bit more recognition in in places like that. But um, it was I I don't I I really can't quite describe like why it was different, but it was just great to like during the pandemic and since 2022, I've made so many more quilty friends and really dove more deeply into the quilting world. And I guess because of that, I just had so many more connections and more people to talk to and, and meet and say hello to and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it was a really fun quilt con this year. And I was, I kind of had gone through this, like I went in 22 and then I was like, Oh, I don't need to go in uh, 23. So I skipped 23. And then I was going to skip uh, 25 because I was like, oh, this isn't a yearly thing that I need to do like every single year. Mm -hmm. I can skip a year and come back to it. Um, but, you know, I was already having FOMO at the end of this year's QuiltCon. And I yeah. was like, I really don't want to miss out next year. So yeah. I, I decided then, you know, why not, why not go ahead and, and uh, make the jump and do it again? Yeah. Yeah, I think not having been before, there was that FOMO for me too. And like, also thinking that in that imposter syndrome, like you brought up, it's just like not thinking that I had a place to be there or not yes. thinking it was my, my place to be there, I guess. And yes. so as I've worked to grow my quilting business and worked to grow the podcast, you know, it's not huge, huge yet, but like, I feel like what I'm doing and I could just be tooting my own horn or delusional. I don't care. Not at all. Um, Not at like, all. I'm trying to build a more authentic audience. And so I'm letting it build yes. slowly on purpose. Um, yep. But anyway, so then finally I was like, mom, we're going to quilt con. And she was like, <laughs> okay, let's do it. So we finally, you know, went and I was like, we're a quilting business. Like we have a presence here. We're busy. Yep. We're popular, you know in certain circles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Absolutely. anyway, 
I think getting over that like feeling of not belonging was so silly. Like, and once we were there and talking to people and running into people I know and have met through the podcast or just, Mm -hmm. or just because they're online friends, um, was just a really amazing feeling. And I think the quilty sphere has grown so much over the last few years that like all of us coming together in the same space, like from all that growth has just been like, it was explosive. It was so yes. energetic and so beautiful and exhausting at the same time. <laughs> it really I'm, was. I'm so it really excited really for was. Phoenix. Yeah. It, I, I'm so excited for that too. I do find that QuiltCon, QuiltCon is kind of this weird thing that happens because I get really inspired. I get super yeah. inspired by the quilts. I get super mm-hmm. inspired by the people. I get super inspired by so many different aspects of it. But mm-hmm. then I also get... Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I feel like, um, not less than, but like inadequate. I feel mm-hmm. inadequate compared to like the quilts I'm looking at, or sometimes even the people that are there yeah. because not because the, not because they're mean or, or rude or anything right. like that, but right. just like, you know, they, they look so, um, uh, effort. It looks so effortless for them. Right. Like it's just, you know, and so it's, it's, it gets this weird, juxtaposition where it's like I'm super inspired I'm super like energized I'm super everything and then I'm also like kind of standing in the corner going oh well maybe you know it's just like this this weird kind of two feelings that are kind of battling each other yeah yeah that cognitive dissonance of like yeah yeah. I want to make this, but I could never make that. Like yeah. I could never make it as beautiful or I don't have that level of creativity to think about making something like that. And I can really, I, I definitely, yep. I was just be standing in front of some quilts and just be like, what the fuck am I even doing in here? <laughs> like I need to go home. I don't belong here. But then also the whole point is for inspiration and to share the love of quilting and the love of the craft. And so it's it is a hard had space to to be in but also like get out of at the same yeah, time definitely. So. definitely and you you had a quilt hanging didn't you no i didn't oh oh well, you were really. but you had it in like the vortex one so i show? entered vortex i entered okay. vortex into QuiltCon, and, and unfortunately it wasn't accepted okay totally understand like not mad about it i'm disappointed because i really wished my quilter could have been, you know, highlighted. I, the thing about that quilt is it's a kit from okay. Legit Kits. I, oh, yeah. I totally understand, like, the decision that their quilt con kind of prioritizes original works over, sure. you know, kits and stuff like that. I totally understand. Yeah. It makes sense. It still is, you know, disappointing because I feel like my quilter, like, she took what I was hoping to do with it and like we we brainstormed on it for a while we took um some tracing paper and took a picture and you know put it up on the wall and took the tracing paper and traced out several different ideas of what we could do with it and she executed it so beautifully and i'm just i really want to get this quilt out in front of eyes because her work truly deserves it. I did, I, I feel like I did a good job, you know, mm-hmm. foundation paper piecing. I feel like I did a good job. Cool. Great. But like, it's her quilting that really sets that quilt off. And I really want to get that in front of more eyes. Sure. And so, so. you hung it in other shows though, right? I did. Recently? I did. Okay. I hung it in the um, Dallas quilt show and I'm, I've already entered it into a couple other shows, but uh, a lot of shows don't want to have kits which again oh. totally understand that's mm-hmm. that's their prerogative and i understand that but you know it it limits the places that i can put that one in unfortunately yeah well if you don't have it going anywhere at the end of september um my one of my local guilds has a big quilt show Sweet. and there is a category for um like if you want to enter it for the quilting yeah. you can or um anyway we have multiple categories so that'd be wow. super cool i'll give you some that'd more information great. but yeah, yes it's, please do yeah, yeah i would i'd be very interested yeah it's um boise basin quilters as the guild and um our show is just fantastic i really appreciate like everything and they they try to hang as many quilts as possible so that's awesome that's great really, yeah anyway well that's so cool. cool and i am just seeing pictures of it and just that it's you know being hung other places is is yeah. great to get eyes on it and you know, it's, 
the the collaborative nature of quilts is even if you make it all by yourself, you're like you if it's a pattern from somebody else that you didn't write, that's a collaboration. If it's yep. color inspiration from someone else's quilt, that's collaboration. If it's quilting inspiration from other designs, that's collaboration. Like it doesn't happen in a vacuum. And so I love that you are wanting to share your quilters work because as a long armor, I know (laughs) how much work goes into that kind of stuff and, and the labor of love that it is. And so that's really, really nice. But literally on the invoice that she gave for, for when it came time to obviously pay her for for everything. (laughs) Um, it was funny because she listed, um, she literally, and I, I, this is literal. I'm not making this up. She put on the uh, invoice, she put a billion thread changes because she was changing colors on every <laughs> single one of those tiles. So she oh literally God. listed out a billion thread changes. And I'm like, that's, that's fair. That is definitely like, very fair. Noted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and those legit kits are so cool. I had um, the owner, Mike on the show mm-hmm. a while back and, um, and he gifted me the Skullover <gasps> quilt. I have that one. I have that one too. I haven't, Ugh. I haven't started it. It's sitting... I haven't either. Oh. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> but I also want to make it so bad because I have a yeah. quilt display wall in my living room and I want to hang yeah. it up so bad. And I want to quilt the shit out of it. Like I have all these plans, but my brain is like overwhelmed. I can't <laughs> touch it. It's fine. Um, I will get to it, but I love I love the, like the designs and just the ingenuity and it lends for great quilting and it does. So it really does. And there's been several, if you, if you're a part of their Facebook group, um, Mm -hmm. people will post all the time that they've entered them into like state fairs and stuff like that. And they, there's so many people that have gotten ribbons with those. And it's, I I'm hoping I have, um, the kit is called Margo the boxer I have that one. Um, I tried to quilt it. I was actually spending time with uh, So Becca back last November. Mm-hmm. I spent a month at her house, and um, I she has a long arm, not computerized, mm-hmm. but you know was working on it. And I was doing straight line quilting, like first time kind of doing doing that that thing. And yeah, I you know got about a little less than halfway into the quilt. I started rolling it and. Mm-hmm as I rolled it up, it was birds, birds, nests, birds, nests, birds, nests, birds, nests. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And so I had to, I had to seam rip all the, well, not seam rip, but I had to pick out all those stitches. And thankfully, uh, one of her friends like loves handwork and that kind of stuff. And she like took the rest of it and, and pulled it all out for me. So I'm not going to take full credit for pulling all that quilting out because I did not, but I, I'm like, terrified to put it on another long arm again yeah. because I'm like oh, I don't want to mess it up I want this to come out great but I do yeah. want to enter that in a, in the Texas State Fair and I want to do the quilting on it because our state fair if it's a two-person quilt it's not eligible for grand prize so oh, I want to okay. try I don't I mean I'm not saying that I would get a grand prize but I would like to at least be you know in the running to possibly make that happen so yeah yeah. I'm I'm trying to trying to see what's going to happen with that one, but oh my gosh. state fair's coming up fast, and I'm like, Ooh. I know it's like, oh, I have all this time, and then you turn around and you're like, I'm just kidding, I have no time. Yes, <laughs> yes, and especially because I'm I'm like trying to start the process of moving, and so mm-hmm. I'm like, and I have a weekly live stream that I do on my YouTube channel. So I'm trying to like plan how am I going to balance packing stuff away while also having enough supplies and things out that I can continue to make live streams and and, and videos and stuff like that. So yeah. Ugh. Fun times. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm glad I haven't moved for a while because I we moved so much like I say early part, but we've only lived in this house for like seven years and or this will be that's a long time year. though it is a long time it's the longest time we've lived anywhere together in our nearly 16 year relationship so like yeah all that nine years prior was like apartment 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 and then yeah. we finally got into buying our own properties and so anyway that's awesome. so that feeling of the ang- anxiety that comes with like do I need to take like 
getting fed yes. up and just being like, I don't need to take any of this. I'm trashing it all. And then getting in the new place and being like, shit, I really should have kept that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's the hard balance that it, cause obviously I'm already starting to pack like smaller things or things that I don't use very often and stuff like that. And I'm already like, I kind of just want to be like, just get rid of half of it and like not right. see it again. And then I'm like, but you know, you're going to get to the new location and be like, dang, I really wish I could have the thing that I threw away or gave away. So yeah, it's fighting that balance, trying to not be, take everything and pack everything, but also like not throwing everything away. Yeah. Yeah. And like keeping keeping out the things that you want to use mm -hmm. and, and need to use, you know, it's, it's like, how do you, how do you figure out what to pack and when, and like the yep. timing of everything. So it's like, you might be all really motivated and pack a bunch of stuff and be like, Oh, I actually need that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yep. Yeah. I would definitely so. leave my sewing room for last. That's because. Yep. My, my know. sewing area is actually my living room. I don't have a couch. This is, this is literally my living room. I don't Whoa. have a couch or anything. <laughs> and so I sit in front of my TV and like, so a lot of times, um, so I'm kind of like, well, the sewing room is the living room. So I've got to figure that whole situation out. Yeah. Um, and I'm also, my movers are going to come on like Friday and I'm not leaving until Tuesday. So I have a little bit of space in between and that's going to be kind of fun being in very empty apartments yeah be like well what do i do now yeah, but really... thankfully they're not taking my machines i'm moving my machines because oh, i'm good. not about to let a mover touch, touch anything yeah. with my machines so mm. i'm i'm doing that that's good yeah that's good yeah definitely wow. Well, that'll be fun. And I know you said you're doing like a giveaway on your YouTube if people can guess where you're moving. So, yep. Yep. So we'll June, so, and I think this episode comes out after that's closed because we're going to okay. be, I think June 1st is the deadline. So okay. hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, the winner will have been selected and yeah. everybody uh, will know where I'm I'm going to be moving. But it's it's been a fun little, because I was talking with my um, subscribers and audience on YouTube and they were like you should make it like a guessing game on where you're going to be moving and I'm like yeah. you know what it's not actually a bad idea so yeah. talked with uh, the threaded lines and they offered up a $25 gift card for the winner so if oh, you nice. if if they enter the correct state that I'm going to be moving to and their name will get entered into a drawing for for that gift card so pretty super awesome super fun how fun yeah, yeah. and yes yep. this is this still this is coming out after so everybody will know who won they'll know where you're at and they can come find you later um <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not that sounds but, a little stalkery but yeah. okay let's not no, let's kidding. not go stalker zone but you know we can hang out <laughs> um hey there I'm here to talk to you about smart labels. Back in April, we did an episode about organizing your space and smart labels were featured as one of those things that can help you. It's spring cleaning time and your future self will love you for getting these labels. Here's how they work. You buy the smart labels QR code labels, you stick them on your storage bins, you download the app, you scan the codes, and you can catalog all the stuff in your bins. You can put the name, descriptions, pictures even to help you know what's in your bins. Then months down the road, when you're looking for that one thing you know you have somewhere, you can just search in the app and it will tell you exactly where you put it. Seriously, I love these things. I've tried them in my studio. I've used them on bins where I've got a bunch of different fabric and I can just find it so easily because of smart labels. They are organizing magic. So if you're doing some spring cleaning, if you're getting ready for a summer move or just wanting to get organized, you need to check out Smart Labels. Just do a search on Amazon for Smart Labels, one word, and get started with your Smart Labels pack today. Well, fun. Okay, so we've talked about so many things, but I want to know like how you even got into quilting and crafting in yeah. the first place because you have crafter in your, in your um, Instagram handle and your YouTube channel name. So how... How did you get into this space in the first place? Yeah, um, it has been a convoluted journey for sure. <laughs> um, 
it started off, uh, I graduated from college and my major is um, technical theater with focus in light design. Oh. So I was focused in like my path was set. I was going to go get my lighting degree masters. I was going to head to Broadway. I was going to do light design for Broadway shows. Like that was the path that I was taking. Um, and so I graduated college and, um, kind of decided that I was going to take a year sabbatical because mm -hmm. I like just getting out of college, I was done with, you know, taking tests and doing the classwork and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I need a little bit of time to not, but I was still working for a local community theater. And so I actually bought a cricket from, uh, well, I, I was going to say the company, but I forgot it's cricket, <laughs> the yeah. company. But anyways, yeah. I bought a cricket because um, in light design, we have these like cookie cutters for light and they're called gobos. Okay. And uh, they're just like round shapes that the light passes through and you can create, you know, textures, shapes, mm -hmm. shadows, all these different things. And I wanted a way to be able to make my own so that I could like not have to order them or, you know, spend budget on them or anything like that. And so I bought yeah. a cricket thinking, oh, this will work. It, it didn't, it didn't work. But oh, no. <laughs> um, I started running with the cricket and I ended up getting kind of connected with some paper crafters because I pulled up YouTube on how to use the cricket, how to, you know, do all the things, use design space, stuff like that. And so I ended up connecting with a couple of crafters, Melody Lane and Crafts by Two. And just kind of started up a friendship with them. And they kind of inducted me into their circle of friendship. And there were several of us that kind of started YouTube channels um, using the Cricut, doing paper crafts, all that kind of stuff. So I dove headfirst into paper crafting and just doing all the stamps, all the inks, everything. And loved doing that. I started putting out weekly videos of making greeting cards and just kind of slowly started building up my channel from from that. Um, and then uh, I moved out of my mom's house and into an apartment with a roommate. And that kind of changed the dynamic of my creativity. Um, I didn't want to disturb my roommate. And, you know, the setup wasn't conducive because part of my stuff was out in the living room. Part of my stuff was in my room. And it really interrupts the flow when you're like, oh, dang, I don't have that tool or, oh, I don't have that ink. I've got to get up and go get it, right? Yeah. Like, it's so much easier to have everything just at hand's reach. And so um, I kind of took a little bit of a backseat, stopped making as many videos. I was still working with Cotton Cuts, um, doing their puzzle mystery quilt videos, but that was about it for, for probably about a year or so. And um just kind of cruised on that for a while. And then when I got my own place, I really started upping my quilting content and all that kind of stuff. The transition happened though, because I, um, I really got into quilting because in middle school, my aunt gave me a Harry Potter quilt, Harry Potter, all the rage. Yeah. And love that quilt. In fact, I loved it to death quite oh, literally no. <laughs> used it every single night and um, it started to literally disintegrate. Oh I, I'm not even kidding you. It, it started to disintegrate. And so I asked my aunt, I was like, hey, um, can, can you make me another one? And she was like, no, but we'll make one together. And mm -hmm. so we started working on a design. I love Disney. So we made a Disney themed one and we used the Cricut to cut out the Mickey Mouse silhouettes yeah. and put those on it um just all that kind of stuff had a great time putting it together and it really got me into sewing and exploring all that quilting has to offer mm -hmm. one of my coworkers at the time she was a part of a quilt guild and she reminded me that there was a quilt guild in my city um and that you know I should go check it out and so I did I went and checked it out and the first meeting was okay they were teaching people how to put uh, hanging sleeves onto their quilts oh, so okay. I was kind of like I mean this is fun and they were all very interested in me because obviously I am a male quilter and there mm -hmm. are not many of us there are some but there's mm -hmm. not as many of us out there and so all the ladies were very lovely and just like wanting to find out more about me and and hoping that I would come back and all that kind of stuff and so 
the meeting wasn't like super impressive. They were great, but the meeting subject matter just wasn't impressive. And so yeah. I was like, do I really want to go back? And it's like, all right, fine. And little did I know Libs Elliot was the guest at the next one. Holy moly. So I was like, I walk in and, you know, she's head to toe tattoos. And I was like, that's not what? <laughs> like very confused for a yeah. moment. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, cool. So somebody knew that I didn't see at the meeting last time thinking that she was a member. Mm. Um, Cause I had no idea who she was at that time. Yeah. And then um, she gets up and starts talking about how she uses code to generate her quilt tops. And at that time I was working for a science museum doing um, STEAM programming. So mm -hmm. science, technology, engineering, art, and math, mm -hmm. taking a maker space out into the community. And this was right up my alley. So Libs Elliot is kind of the whole reason that I went back and kept going at it. So thanks Ooh. Libs, appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just kind of kept running with it and have had a great time exploring and creating and seeing what, what happens next. Cause I don't really have a plan like I don't have a destination I'm just kind of enjoying the ride finding out where it's going to take me and mm -hmm. who knows where that's going to be yeah wow so. that's incredible and yeah thank you Liz like that's amazing <laughs> right um the the thing with guilds is like they're just so hit or miss and that's like it's so great that you were like I'm gonna just give it one more chance yeah just to be like oh and here is this amazing human who is very inspirational and shows that merging of like the old with the new and yes like bring this yeah. technology in and all these fun crazy prints and amazing patterns like yep. what an experience <laughs> yeah and it's funny because i went from guild member i don't remember the exact timeline but i feel like i went from guild member to guild president within like two years of joining so <laughs> it was a very fast kind of like everybody yeah. I, I threw my hat in the ring and everybody was so supportive and like absolutely yeah. we would love for you to be president and so I did was president in um 2019 and then 2020 Ugh, woof and uh little did I know like little did the world know but little did I know we were gonna have to make such huge pivots and try to try to figure out how to hold a guild together mm -hmm. in the middle of a pandemic. So I, I'm so thankful that I had such an amazing board working with me. We all we all you know dove in and figured out what we were gonna do. And I was, you know, thankfully one of our, our board members had a professional Zoom account. And so we were able to use Perfect. their Zoom account and uh, be able to hold our meetings and I was like at that time Kahoot like opened up for free for a little bit so like yeah. we would do Kahoots to try and keep things oh, fun. fun and interesting and like yeah, that was <laughs> after 2020 was over with I was like I, I I'm, I'm stepping <laughs> thankfully the bylaws said that I had to step down after two years in that position um, so I was like all right I, I everyone was like well you didn't like a couple of guild members were like well but you didn't technically didn't because we we didn't meet and, and I'm like I'm okay stepping down you're like, like look at the time I have to I, go <laughs> I was I was ready to step down and let somebody else take over for a little bit because it was it was a lot. It was a lot. We had to make some really hard decisions. We have a local a local show that gets put together. Uh, like eight guilds come together to put oh. this show on. Okay. And there was a lot of like back and forth of, you know, are we going to have this show? Are we not going to have this show? Can we have this show? Can we do it safely? Like mm -hmm. so many things to take into, into consideration and, and, you know, trying to keep people safe, trying to keep still wanting to give something to have people to do and stuff like that but also yeah. you know maintaining that safety and everything it ended up not happening because the city closed down all of its conventions and all that kind of stuff so it, sure. it, it ended up not you know kind of being a mute point at that yeah. but it was hard you know sitting on those phone calls and and you know wanting to talk through everything it was right it wasn't easy yeah no i i i don't doubt it and like I mean, I'm like a subcommittee of a subcommittee in my, in the BBQ, the guild that yeah. I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. But even that was like, I took over that position right before everything shut down. Oh. So like, 
I didn't get to, I didn't do anything for a long time. And then finally, as things started opening back up and I was able to kind of push ideas through and get things going, it was still like, yeah, same thing. We had some board changes, but not in other seats. And it was just, there was so much going on. And so many people were like, it's fine. We should be able to meet if we want to. And we're like, actually, no, we shouldn't meet. You know, it's just like balancing the, the, all the opinions and all the ideas. And yeah, we did like you guys ended up doing a lot of stuff over zoom and we'd get guest speakers who were willing because they, they needed to continue doing what they do. And, um, so we had some cool programs that we were able to do online and, um, yeah, it was just such a wild time. We got, um, her name escapes me at this very moment and I'm okay. terrible with names, like I said, <laughs> but um, she's over in the UK and like, we would have never had been able to have her come to our guild because obviously it's expensive to fly in guests from the UK and, yeah. and have them, you know, stay and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, we never would have been able to have her normally, but because of the pandemic, having her over zoom, having her teach us all of the techniques and everything was just, it was it in many ways, it brought a lot of things to a new direction that we never would have gone before. Like it opened yeah. things up in a new direction that we never really thought was possible before. So yeah. I, I think the pandemic of course was horrible and like, I'm still, I'm still not over it. I'm still, yeah. dealing with with uh you know post post covid uh kind of feelings and like yeah. i still wear a mask when i go out because mm. i i do have a couple of medical things going on that i that i got to protect myself and i feel like yeah. i need to protect myself and here in texas it's kind of frowned upon people you know d- thankfully i have not had anybody come up to me but i've definitely had people give me those dirty looks and i'm mm-hmm. like leave me alone guys it's like right. just, just go about your day leave me alone it's fine but yeah. it's it's such a it's a, such a different world now it is and just the thought that like someone trying to protect themselves is so offensive to other people I'm like yeah. go away like yeah. why is this why is me protecting myself Im- impacting you in any way exactly. I'm not asking exactly. you to do anything I'm just existing in this space in the way that I feel safest and like yeah I mean man yeah it's <laughs> I've, I've, I've had a couple of comments on YouTube videos because I've go out I've gone out to to different shows at Quilcon. I did a quick little live from Quilcon, and I had a mask on mm-hmm. and I've had to literally delete comments off my YouTube video saying Yuck. like why are you wearing a mask that's not you know you don't need that anymore or anything like that and I'm just like it's not true it literally does not affect you like yeah it, it doesn't matter to you so so it's it's frustrating but yeah. you know you, whenever you put yourself online you open yourself up to comments like that and the delete button is there for a reason yeah I wish um it worked on all the platforms because there's some <laughs> there's some things I would wish I could delete in some spaces just because it's like mean for no reason like yeah so you don't like me don't listen then like I'm not telling you you have to you don't have to also tell the entire world yep there anyway are- plenty of other places for you to go watch there are plenty of other videos for you to go watch like it's it's okay that you don't like me or don't like that I'm wearing a mask that's fine yeah feel free to go somewhere else yeah well and I think too like it's the same thing about like making the kind of quilts you want to make or doing things in the way that you want to do them like yeah I try to be an open advocate for like making things in a way that is um feasible and sustainable for you and If you can't go buy brand new fabric for every single quilt project, then don't, you know, if, if you, if it's easier for you to order online from Amazon or, you know, other inexpensive outlets, because you don't have access to, then do it. Like, I'm not here to yuck your yum. I'm not here to tell you like what you can and can't do. Um, But the amount of people who think they can, or that they, it's their like life's mission to boss other people around. Um it's crazy to me so yeah. I it's also that. interesting sorry nope you go ahead <laughs> it's also interesting to me because I created a mini quilt um mm-hmm. I used some tula pink fabric it's the bananas from monkey wrench yeah. so going all the way back to monkey wrench 
um, I literally used foundation paper piece to spell out the word shit. Ah. So it's the shit, shit is, bananas, is bananas is the name of the quilt. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I love it. And I love that quilt. It's such a fun mini quilt. It It's so much fun. And I like I've entered it into several shows mm -hmm. and I've all out of I think like five shows that I've entered only one actually accepted it and displayed it the rest of them have have not so it's kind of interesting that it's I think it's a fun quilt mm -hmm. I think it's a funny quilt I, the whole intention behind that quilt was to make people laugh and like smile which yeah. at the show that it was in it was in the dallas quilt show uh two years ago uh not this year year before anyways whatever um and <laughs> i was literally like i could see it across the way i was looking at other quilts and i could see it across the way and there were two ladies standing in front of it and i just kind of watched them interacting and again i'm looking at the the back of their heads but like all of a sudden one of the ladies starts doing this number Oh. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so I walked over to her and I said, ma'am, I saw you dancing from across the room. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, no, no, I made this quilt. I know exactly what was happening. Yeah. I appreciate that very much. And she's like, well, my friend never heard the song before. So I had to sing it for her. <laughs> and you have to bop while you sing and, it. <laughs> right, right. And so I was definitely like, like that just made my day seeing that reaction to it. And yeah. I loved, I loved that interaction, but it it bums me out that uh, unfortunately a lot of quilt shows are not interested in having it. Which again, it's their rules; they get to make up like whatever they want the to, sure. the guidelines to be and stuff like that. Totally understand. No, no, not upset about that. It just yeah. you know it's a disappointment, and um, it led to some funny emails back and forth. There was an online show that mm -hmm. I had submitted to, and the very nice lady representative you know got back to me about a week later and she's like hey you know unfortunately we we don't you know do any any bad words or anything you know super political or anything like that mm -hmm. <clears throat> so unfortunately your quilt is is not going to be able to be displayed but you know just just so you know I appreciated this quilt and it's been fun you know looking at it and all this kind of stuff and yeah we sent a couple emails back and forth between her talking about a few different things and she said, uh, as a side note, it's been funny with this uh, quilt because I've, uh, when I was emailing with the organizers of the show, um, this this email, the picture would pop up every time I opened the email. So I had shit in my inbox all week. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it was oh it was a great email. It was a fun rejection letter that I was definitely like, all right, that's that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, at least they can do it with a good sense of humor and yeah. a good attitude. I think it's yeah. hard when people are like, well, you shouldn't expect anybody to want to see that. It's like, um, just because you don't doesn't mean other people don't. Like, I did see it um in one of your posts that you shared and I was like yes I love this so <laughs> much like I just I love to see it I love to see people express themselves and what they're making and if you're open to just like letting it be art then so many fun things can come out of it and yeah and connections can be made because people are like yep I feel that way too sometimes like this shit is bananas actually <laughs> like <laughs> and or just you know like the reference to the song and mm -hmm. be excited about that piece and or just love Tula and love the bananas and you know it's yeah. like there's so many aspects that can be loved about it but absolutely uh, and as soon as I saw that fabric from Tula I knew exactly what I needed to do with it it took me a couple of years to like make it happen right but as soon as I saw the bananas I was like I know exactly what needs to happen with that <laughs> You're like, I understand the assignment. <laughs> I understand the assignment. <laughs> yep. I still have some of that fabric too. And I really want to make another one because I, I did a good job with the first one. But like I ended up after I finished, I realized that I had totally missed one of the foundation paper piece steps. Like oh. I just completely missed it. And like okay. you can't tell because it still forms the S shape on it, mm -hmm. but it just isn't as clean of a oh. curve. So I was like, mm. and my quilting, I tried to do straight line quilting and it ended up being like more off kilter, which uh, is totally a brand for me, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was a little, it was a little off. So I was like, dang it, I've tried so hard to make it perfect. I used tape, I did everything. And it's a small enough one that I can do on my domestic, but sure. I was just like, dang, I might go back and remake it again. So 
Yeah. We'll see. There may be more shit in my future. Hey, I like it. <laughs> I mean, if you're not making shit, you're not making. Cause I think there's, there is no creativity. There's no art creation without making something shitty sometimes. And yeah. You know, especially if you're experimenting and trying new things and making your own patterns or making your own designs, like, and, um, I've, I've referenced this before, but it was so impactful to me. Like, um, I read the book bird by bird by mm -hmm. Anne Lamott. She's a writer. And this book is about the writing process. And I was in a, a writing process class. Um, so, you know, it was apropos, but yeah. the, the idea is that everybody, no matter what you're doing, writing, painting, drawing, quilting, whatever it is, you all like, there's always a, a shitty first draft, like yeah. always, you can't escape yes. it. And sometimes there's good nuggets in there, but as a whole, the, the first thing you write down, is going to be shit and you just yeah. have to accept that. And, um, that has definitely helped me fight some perfectionism. Like, no, it's something I have to get it out and you have to just try. Cause if you never start, you'll never make anything. Yeah. If you're expecting perfection at all times, you'll never make anything. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm Absolutely. of the mind to just make weird shit. Like, I don't know. Yep. I think I've said I'm shit in... like 65 times. So I'll stop saying it, but anyway, <laughs> oh, <it's all> good. <laughs> you I, started it. A... <laughs> I did. I didn't start it. Uh, I'm an instructional designer for my daytime job. And so okay. a lot of times I'm, I'm, I'm making a lot of, of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that word, but I'm yeah. making a lot of stuff <laughs> that is, is, uh, you know, needs to be refined. And it, mm -hmm. it's that first rough draft that you're putting out of anything. Mm -hmm. You've, it, you've, you've got to get it out so that it's at least out there and you can clean it up from there. So it, it's an important lesson that I've learned going through life in general is, mm -hmm. you know, put the, put the rough draft out there, put the rough draft out there let it, you know, percolate out there and you're going to get mm -hmm. feedback on it. Some of it's going to be good. Some of it's not going to be good. Yeah. Um, and you kind of have to weed your way through all of the, all of that feedback and, you know, accept what you want to accept in and then reject what you don't. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're not allowed to because we have, you know, work restrictions or other right. restrictions, but, you know, a lot of times you can still take the good, leave the bad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You just have to try it out and see what happens. Yep. And it's so funny, like you're mentioning all these things and like, I was an educator, but I got my degree or my master's degree in educational technology. So like being an instructional designer, or, like just all the little things I'm like, oh my God, we have like all these little connections. We it's do. Kind of fun. Yeah. So it's yeah. Super fun. I was, I was an informal educator. I mean, again, I talked about my theater degree, like yeah. that was the path I was going to go on, but I've worked in, um, in science museums for over 14 years. I had wow. over 14 years uh, working in science museums and I was an informal educator. Like that was yeah. what I did. So uh, I think that instructional design kind of fits right in line with that informal education, but also like it's, it's helped me on my YouTube channel as well. My YouTube channel has helped my work. My work has helped my YouTube channel. Like they kind of just intermingle with each other yeah. and have really, really helped it a lot. In fact, when the pandemic happened, I was working for a, a library system and, um, you know, we were all kind of figuring out like, what are we going to do? Cause obviously programs, uh, excuse me, libraries do a lot of programming. They do mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, story times. They do, um, stuff for the kids all the time. They do stuff mm -hmm. for adults all the time. So it was like this huge, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We, our doors are closed. We can't have people in our building. Right. Everybody's at home what are we going to do? And so um, I helped my team kind of pivot from in-person learning to, you know, YouTube videos and online learning and just try to mentor them the best that I could since I had been doing YouTube at that point for like five years or something like that. So yeah. it was, it was kind of steering the ship and helping them grow. And uh, it was a really great transition seeing them hit the ground running so yeah. it's it's interesting how things just kind of interweave their way through uh mm -hmm. all your I, I guess your skill sets kind of interweave with with everything yeah if that makes yeah. sense yeah no it totally does and I I talked about it a few times on here too is like there's just so many things that I mean especially the confidence I got from getting myself through a master's degree that was really 
Yeah. I mean, I say hard, but there was like an entire class where all we did was play Minecraft and <laughs> World of Warcraft and Second Life and, you know, all these like digital interactive spaces. But, um, yep. and thankfully I lived with um, my older son, actually both my kids and my husband, like encyclopedic knowledge of Minecraft. So if I had any issues, I'd be like, help. And they'd be like, okay, do this and go here and grab this and do that. I'm like, okay, thank you so much. Um, not that I was cheating, but <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just like it's little using things. your resources is what it is. Yeah. And they would never like, just do it for me. They're like, sure. I'm like, you have to show me how I have to do this. Like I never let them just do it for yes. me. I wanted to learn and I enjoyed playing and being in part of their, their situation. But anyway, absolutely. I also no, worked. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and I forgive me for interrupting, but like no. that was one of the biggest things of when I worked at the library was like teaching people how to do it, not doing it for them. Yes. Um, I worked in the makerspace, so we had 3D printers and it was so important to me. I actually created the training for the 3D printers and like how people should be interacting with patrons as they're working yeah. with the 3D printing. Um, I guess I should have known I was going to head in instructional design because of that. But anyways, um, but like that was one of the, the the things that I was really trying to hit home with everybody is like they're going to be doing all the steps on the computer. You don't like do it for them. You can help them, you know, take yeah. those educational moments like, you know, people would want to scale an item up or down depending mm -hmm. on how big it was, how big right. the file was. So, yeah. you know, some file would come in ginormous it was going to take eight hours to print it out and I was like okay well you know we can do it this big but you know if you want it quicker if you want it like in an hour then we need to shrink it and we would talk about you know okay if it's at a hundred percent this is a dollar bill and we want to shrink it down to like 25 percent well how many quarters are in a dollar and like right. trying to go through the breakdown of everything to get them being like, oh, okay, well, if we wanted 25%, that's also like 25 cents. So, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a cool blend of just like teaching problem solving skills yes. too. Like, yep. I, yeah, I love it. But anyway, I also was, um, I taught a, a STEM summer camp. Yeah. I, they only hired educators to teach the camps, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, they're no longer That's in great. existence due to funding, oh. um, but they that. had a big converted city bus that they would take to schools and do programs. And my little brother is actually the one who got me into it because he he worked there since high school. He would just like be on the bus, be doing tech stuff. Like he's always been super tech minded. That's and awesome. um, he's like, you should you should teach camp. He's like here. Like they came to my school when I was a teacher at the time and um. He was like, oh yeah, here's the camp leaders, like introduced me to people. And they were like, yeah, do you want to be a, a camp teacher? And I was like, yeah. And it was actually like really good money. And I got continuing ed credits for the training for learning nice. the different classes and camps that I'd be teaching. Cause we worked with yeah. like Makey Makey. We worked with Raspberry yeah. Pis. Like we worked in, with a lot of Minecraft. We worked with the, um, what are those little Lego robotic vehicles? Uh, Mindstorm? Yes. Yeah. We worked with Mindstorm and yeah. anyway, so there was like a lot of really fun things. And, um, then because I was working through that, I got to travel to Dubai twice with, oh my gosh, on a different end of the company and be like, we worked with Emirati teachers trying to teach them like growth mindset and engineering design thinking. And they were, it was, that part was wild. That was so <laughs> wild. And that's a conversation for a different day but <laughs> like just the things I never thought I would ever go to that part of the world or experience yeah. that kind of thing or be teaching any sort of technology to anybody besides my own self like anyway so there's just like all these things and experiences that just I can pull into my business and like you know for you the YouTube videos and instructional yep. design like marrying into this like kind of forward moving locomotive and yeah I feel the same way with my business. I feel like I can interact online and do all these things. I know how the inner workings work or how I can design things because I have this background and, and I mean, I know that I have more potential too yep. in the space. I just haven't fully tapped into it because I'm tired, yeah. but um, <laughs> no, I get it. I totally get it. And it's funny because you, you brought up some, like Ozobots, makey, makey, all that, yeah. like that was 
bread and butter for me. That was all the things that I was using. I actually made a quilt when I started getting into quilting and mm -hmm. joined my guild and all that kind of stuff. I actually made a um, conductive thread quilt. So it was a little mini quilt. It wasn't yeah. very big, but it was just, it, the name of it was like proof of concept version 1.0 because I just wanted to see if it could be done. And so yeah. I used that connective thread and connective uh, con uh, conductive, excuse me, conductive thread, conductive fabric, and put a makey makey down in the corner of it. So when you would like complete the connection, cause you become a part of the circuit on yeah. it for those who don't know how it works. Yeah. Um, and so I would actually have it like play four notes. It had four musical notes that you could uh -huh. play on it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times quilting is like, do not touch, don't touch the quilts, don't touch the quilt. Yeah. But this was one that was like, no, we want you to touch the quilt. And um, I actually entered it into the show, uh, thankfully, the the show chair was um, in my guild. She kind of knew, she kind of understood what I was going for with it and everything. And so she she set up for it to be, you know, something that could be in the show. Um, but it was really funny because the judges had no idea what it was <laughs> yeah. at all. And it like, it wasn't hooked up to the computer because you do have to have the computer yeah. for it to work. Yeah. So it wasn't hooked up to the computer and it was hanging in the show, but like, as the judges went by, it wasn't working or wasn't doing what it, you know, anything. Yeah. And I remember getting back my feedback sheet on it and they're like, such a unique applique item in the left, in the bottom right corner, which is the making makey board. And it was like, <laughs> like is this a you had <laughs> no idea what you were looking at. No. at all. <laughs> so it was funny. It was after the judging happened, they took it down and moved it into my guild's booth so mm. that people could interact with it and okay. see it and all that kind of stuff. But okay. it was just really, really funny that the judges were completely clueless on it. Yeah. It's, I think judging in general is funny in that way because it's like the only access they get to your thinking is through the title of your quilt. And so yeah. like, and if they have no idea about any technology, anything, then of course they're, it's going to blow right past them. And like, yeah. even in like modern spaces, it's like hearing judging and hearing what their comments were. It's like, oh, you totally have no clue what this technique is, or you don't have experience with this. So yeah, it's just kind of interesting how like so much weight is put on the comments of these people who might even not have any idea or any like real opinions or thoughts on the thing that you're trying to do because they don't have any experience with it so right there's there's many shows that have a modern category but they don't have a modern judge right to judge them so it's it's interesting yeah. shows are always very interesting and i'm, I'm going to be putting out a video that kind of talks about like you want to enter a quilt show what do you need to keep in mind how do you yeah. keep it all together and probably by the time this um, podcast comes out it'll it'll be out there already but okay. um, it's been an interesting journey entering quilt shows and just trying mm. to like keep track of everything and like I, I don't I mean of course I love you know when my quilt wins a ribbon but it's but it's not like the main focus I really just want to get my my work out there in front of eyes and my quilters work out in front of eyes and yeah. um, you know show it off and even though like Vortex, I, I entered it into the wrong category when it was mm -hmm. in Dallas. And I learned that. That was a lesson that I learned from, sure. from this was, hey, you entered it into the wrong category. You should have put it into kits, but mm -hmm. instead I put it into person large quilt. And that is such a competitive category and mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention, but I kind of feel like it got more exposure in that category because the where it was placed in the show, it was kind of in a prominent spot where a lot of people were walking past it. Yeah. If I had put it in the kit category, it would have been in the back corner of the show. Mm. So I feel like even though I didn't enter it in the right category, it still got more exposure with where it is rather than where it would have ended up, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and every show is different too. It's like, I know some shows, if you enter something into what they deem is the wrong category, they kick it out and they won't even judge it. Yeah. So the fact yeah. that they're like, eh, we'll just stick it in there anyway. Like that's, I think that's pretty gracious because I think yeah. not all the time, like, I'm making this quilt not for a certain category and I just want it to get seen versus like, you know, okay, I'm going to follow these instructions specifically. I'm going to get, pull the category and only make quilts that will fit into that. It's like, yeah. no, I made this thing and now I want to enter it and trying to 
trying to pick the best category, I think is hard because so it's, hard. it's perspectives, right? Everybody yeah. has a different perspective. And, and even though the categories are there, there still can be some interpretation on, on what those things mean. And, and speaking to the modern um, judges, I think from our last show, which I also did an episode on, and I interviewed our, our, she's our vice president, she's our newsletter chair, and she's also being um, trained as a, as a quilt show judge. She was with oh, yeah. being trained in the NA, what is it? NACQJ National Association of Quilt yes. Judges. Okay. Yes. Um and that's we that hire right. yeah, we hire NACQJ judges to come to our our quilt show do our judging. And so sure. um and there were a couple quilts that definitely from our like guild member and board member perspectives should have stayed in the modern category, mm -hmm. but the judges didn't think so. And so they bumped them into different categories or like bumped them out. And we were like, what, why? And so one of the things that we said is like, when we're hiring judges, we need to make sure that they are versed on the modern quilt guild definitions. Um, yes. And then I also talked about the, I talked about the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Dissonance, I guess is the best word in the, in the, definition itself because it's minimalism or maximalism and yeah. it's like okay but how do you yeah again it's all perspective and so yeah it's just an interesting it's an interesting thing and, and an interesting process to be a part of too like I was scribing for the judges at that time so I was hearing everything they were saying sure and I was sure. typing those notes and thankfully we had a good pair of judges they worked really well together they were That's very awesome. kind and they just only wanted to be helpful and constructive and good even if they didn't personally like a quilt, they were still very like, well, that's not my style, but I it's great technique. And I really, yeah, you know, this is such an interesting use. Like they just had really great things to say. So I'm, I'm nervous for this next year. Cause we have to get a new pair of judges. <laughs> so I'm Ooh. like, Ooh, anyway, it's just, it's yeah. such an interesting thing. And I'm, I'm interested to hear your take on all of it because from having entered, I've never entered a quilt. So last year was my first real experience of like seeing any of it happening. And, um, I might, if I get it done in time, I might enter one into our like first timers category just for fun. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, but I'd have to actually finish the quilt. It's <laughs> just silly sometimes to think about. I, I understand it's, <laughs> it's a daunting task to get things done. Like I knew last year I had a, I had vortex. Did I have it? A vortex was almost done by the time the deadlines were coming around. And so mm -hmm. like, I probably could have entered it into shows last year, but um, like, you just want to make sure that you're not overworking yourself. I didn't want to be up until 3 AM putting the facing on this quilt, you know, like it, there's yeah. so much that goes into getting it show ready and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I, I totally, I totally understand that. And Shows have been really interesting and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm by no means an expert in it because I'm still learning new things. It seems like every single time, but yeah. it's interesting to, to hear the judges, like on the shows that you do get feedback. It's interesting. Like literally one of my quilts, um, butterfly, the, uh, excuse me, daydreamer, the butterfly effect. That one has been in several shows across the country mm -hmm. and I've gotten feedback from one judge that was like, your binding is too tight. It's, I don't like that literally the other judge was like oh i love your binding you did such a great job with that and i'm like right <laughs> how does okay yeah. so it, it's just it's very you know and it's so subjective mm -hmm. I, I know that judges are you know they need to be impartial and that they need to put their own preferences in the back seat and all that kind of stuff but i it's it's hard sometimes because you see that they prefer one style over another you know just mm -hmm. in who wins ribbons and yeah. it is what it is but it's just interesting and like you hope that they can be as impartial as possible but yeah I mean I, and this isn't a slam on judges at all so I hope the audience doesn't feel like that at all it's just yeah. you kind of have to like think about all the aspects of judging as you're putting the quilt together because yes you're making it for you and you just want your work out there but you know, by the same token, you're thinking about, well, you know, is the judge going to see that I'm, you know, a quarter inch off on this seam or, you know, all these, like, some of the judges have been like, 
I have, I definitely have scenes on one of the quilts that I entered last year that were way off from each other, like mm -hmm. visibly off from each other. And I still won honorable mention at that show. And it was like, I, I, I'd be great. Awesome. But yeah. what? <laughs> so yeah. it's just, it's just very, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely one thing I did take away from the, the judging experience was just not that I was judging, but being behind the scenes and seeing what the process was like. Um, yeah. They were more, obviously they wanted to see good technique, good piecing, yeah. good quilting, like good binding. Um, but they were more interested in the visual impact that the quilt mm -hmm. had overall. And obviously there were some categories that weren't able to be, you know, best of show winners or whatever, but Right. There were a couple that were really close, but then they're like, and they went back and forth for a while because they were like, I don't know, they're both so stunning. And, and the one that won best of show, like it was all, um, it was a Judy Niemeyer pattern. Mm -hmm. So very intricate piece, paper piecing, whatever. And then the yep. quilting was so cool and it gave it so much texture and, um, and it was hand done, you know, a hand, oh my gosh. Uh, hand done custom. Um, so hand, hand is a four letter word for me. So yeah. I'm just like, and oh, well, there was a I... mix of like machine long arm and some sure. hand quilting. So sure. there, you know, there was like hand guided, um, free motion long arming. And then there were some hand stitching in there to like mm. bring out texture and mad and props that, to people who do hand quilting by the way seriously. i can't i can't i can't do it i don't have the patience for it sorry go ahead no i don't either i'm with you <laughs> so i was just like yeah no this that's fair um but even if i'm like getting up close it's like oh those feathers like the tops are kind of flat you know it's like mm -hmm. if i want to nitpick it but if you stand back and your jaw hits the floor that's the purpose you know what yeah. i mean so Absolutely. i i i liked that that's what they stuck with like yeah. which one made my jaw hit the floor and it wasn't about the the nit nitpicky stuff like sure so anyway that was really cool and and it's you know like you said maybe that's they felt the impact of your quilt over a couple missed you know seams and yeah. that's great that's no quilt is perfect and so yeah. looking at the the whole and not just it's yeah the parts is like that's the i think that's the should be the ultimate goal in my opinion yeah. but I anyway agree. <laughs> I definitely agree. I love the visual impact. And I know that there's like techniques that you need to reward. Obviously, if somebody like the visual impact of one quilt is going to be different than like the the preciseness of another quilt. And like right. both of those have merit. Both right. of those are completely they have merit and they have artistic uh, value and mm -hmm. they're both important. So yeah. it's it's just interesting the whole judging aspect, like I said, is just very interesting and you never know, you never know what you're going to get with them. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited to, um, to hear your, 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 uh, episode about it. Cause that'll be super cool. And, um, so with all that being said, like, do you have some projects in the works that you're like waiting to keep working on until you move or that are just kind of going to be, you know, revealed after you move or that you're just, excited to keep working on I'm always excited to anytime I can quilt and you know sew anytime I can sew I'm super excited um I have a couple of things I'm honestly trying to wrap projects up um to to get the space and to get the you know supplies packed away and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so I don't like I'm just trying to finish out some of the projects that I want to work on um while while I have the time and the opportunity um I have a design. I drew up a design for a quilt. I was really inspired at this last quilt con. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth in it because I kind of still want to work on it and and see. I would love to get it into quilt con next year. I don't think it's going to happen with the move because there's mm -hmm. so many moving pieces literally that yeah. happen right now. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, but I have a quilt design idea that I really want to take on and, and design and it's an original piece, which that's something that I'm trying to tackle more is original pieces coming up with original designs. I, I'm great at putting a pattern together. I feel like I am very confident in that. I feel like I do a pretty good job in it and 
you know, I, I think I've got that skill set down. Yeah. I'm starting to branch off into, I want to start doing my own designs. I want to start putting my own signature out there. Um, what does that look like? So yeah. I have come up with a design. It needs, it's going to need foundation paper piecing in it. It's got, it's got things in it that I need a lot of, of work on. So mm -hmm. I, I need to develop the skills on designing my own foundation paper piecing pieces and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. more to come. I have some things that I'm working on that I'm excited for, but um, with the move that kind of slows everything down and yeah, it's <laughs> moving just sucks yeah. I'll just put it I know we already kind of talked about that but moving yeah. just sucks so yeah hopefully sure. in in like a year or two it'll be it'll be in a spot that I can focus on it and really start working on it yeah how incredible and yeah I think if that's like your next step it's like you want to put as much energy as you can into it but like yeah getting everything ready to move is like ugh. Yep. <laughs> Well, I'm working at a daytime job. I love my job. Do not get me wrong. Love yeah. my daytime job, but it eats like most of the day away. So, you know, I only get a couple hours in the evening to work on personal projects and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I use that time as best as I can, but obviously I can't devote a full day of work to it when I need to actually do my daytime job. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, that's how I was started feeling when I was teaching is like, yeah because my mom was doing the business by herself and I would help when I had breaks, but I just, and because I was running our social media, I was like, oh, I wish I was there to take videos of the long arm working and yeah. like, sh you know, make all this content and post all these fun things. Cause she's just sending me all these pictures and I'm like, Oh, nice. You get to quilt all day <laughs> while I'm here with these raggedy kids. No, I love my kids, but um, <laughs> it just started no, feeling, I I feeling it. like, I just, yeah, was wishing I was there more than I was like inspired to be a good teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so, absolutely. So, I, I, feel I totally that. feel that. Yeah. I but. feel that so hard. Yeah. It's, there's so many times when I like really want to work on a project or really want to do something, but just can't. Yeah. Bummer. Um, the, oh my God, the question popped in my head and then it left me again. Oh, no. Oh, I remembered. Okay. Um, also, I want to know, how do you come up with ideas for uh, your YouTube videos? Like if it's suggestions from listener or, you know, your subscribers, um, obviously you do your, your live so long. So that doesn't really mm -hmm. take a lot of effort because you're just chilling and sewing. But I mean, mm -hmm. maybe it you do more plan. effort than you think. Yeah, it really well, does. Yeah, make like it look you... effortless. So that's good. I appreciate that. <laughs> I try very hard to make it look effortless. Uh, it is not easy because you're trying to balance sewing the project, mm -hmm. reading comments, making, you know, being engaged with the comments, make sure you're not missing comments. Mm -hmm. Like there's a whole balancing act that happens and it's so difficult to, to do that, especially by myself. I don't have, you know, some other YouTubers that are like husband and wife or mm -hmm. friends. And so they can kind of bounce off of each other. And when Becca and I have been together, it makes it so much easier because usually if somebody misses a comment, you know, the other one will pick it up right, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's not easy. I love doing it though. And it's been, it's been fun. Um, I'm going to be like sewing the gravity quilt kit a lot. I want to try and get that quilt wrapped up before yeah. I have to move everything. So going to work on that. Um, a lot of ideas. Um, I haven't had the chance to really sit down and do, recorded videos lately there's just been so much going on that i haven't had the chance to because you have to edit them there's yeah. with the live streams you can just go live hit the button yeah it's out there you're done yeah with edited video you have to sit there you know obviously edit it get all of your ducks in a row and all that kind of stuff so i haven't yeah. i haven't had the chance lately to do a lot of that but a lot of ideas come from like for the the you want to enter your quilt into a quilt show video mm -hmm. like I just kind of wanted to compile all the lessons that I've, pardon me, all the lessons that I've learned thus far into, yeah. into it. Um, so I've just kind of wanted to put that information out there. And I've had a couple of people ask me since I started entering quilt shows, like, well, you know, Hey, what's your advice or what do you do? And so this is a video that I would want to see 
if I was entering a quilt show for the first time and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I do get, you know, suggestions for videos all the time. Becca and I will bounce video off of ideas off of each other and be like, hey, you know, how does this sound? Does this sound like a video that people would want to watch <clears throat> and stuff like that? Pardon me. Um, so it's a lot of it's a lot of just, you know, finding what you want to put out there. And there's so many people who feed into the algorithm. They try to find like, what's the latest trend or what's the latest, whatever. And I always, even from the very beginning on my YouTube channel, I never wanted to feed into the algorithm like intentionally. I, and I, by that, I mean, I don't want to chase the trend and put it out there. I want right. to put what I want to put out there. If people like it, great. If people aren't thrilled with it okay fine you know obviously i do want to keep as best as i can to my audience and feeding what they want to see but right. i also want to do what i want to do on my channel so um i may not have grown as fast as some other youtubers out there in any genre of youtube um but you know i'm slowly working my way and hopefully at some point i'll hit that 100,000 that's the goal is 100,000 so i can get that silver plaque finally right. and like <laughs> all right i will keep making videos after that i'm not just going to hit 100,000 and be like done no no like, more videos but mic like, drop. <laughs> right exactly no i i i want to i want to get that plaque be like okay i've hit 100,000 subscribers awesome you know, yeah. I'm going to keep making videos and stuff, but I've, I've accomplished my goal, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm, that's good. I like that. Cause I think, you know, in any online space, it's like, okay, what trends are happening? Like, do you stay that trendy way? But I think that burns out fast because if you're not doing yes. things that bring you joy and spark your own joy, like that's what people connect with. They connect with yep. seeing you, seeing other people doing things that make them happy and um, encouraging them to do the same, like go find what makes yes. you happy. And so I, I have a lot of respect for that. So congratulations on the followership that you do have. Cause I think Thank it's you. a hard fought battle sometimes. It is. It um, is. Not it even is. having but a I thousand. Do. It's like, I'm like bowing down to you. So <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's about treating your audience like they're your friends because they are, they're yeah. your friends and it's important to engage with them. And like, mm -hmm. I, when I was one of the coolest things about QuiltCon this year was getting to meet some of the people who watch the YouTube videos and like, yeah. I see their avatars in their comments or in the chat or whatever, and finally getting to put a face to the name or yeah. screen name like it was it was a really really great experience we're having somebody we were at, we were at the um mid-atlantic quilt show mm. and we didn't even get in the door before somebody was like becca tiffany ian so uh. it was just like it, it's very surreal like people know who i am this is crazy yeah but like um it's also great to have that community and 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 be like you know i i've started I've started signing off my videos on my live streams, at least mm -hmm. I've been signing it off with, I love you because mm -hmm. it just, it's so important to me. And, and like, it's, what am I trying to say? Like, I really do love my audience. I love the friendship that they provide and the interactions that we have. And like, yeah, over the past several years, it's become very, very uh, evident and very like, important to me to just you know even in my personal life make sure to tell my friends that I love them because mm -hmm. it's you, you just never know what's going to happen and yeah. it's it's just crazy I, I I unfortunately had a friend who committed suicide just kind of out of the blue and it was I had just talked to him maybe like a month before and it was like uh, yeah. wow you know it was yeah. it, it kind of hit hard and I'm so, so sorry and it, it's sad and it's I I just am so sad that he he felt like he needed to be in that place but yeah that's why I feel it's just so important to to make sure that the people in your life know that you love them even if they're just friends like yeah I, I still say I love you to my friends because I do mm -hmm. I love them so yeah I think it's so incredibly important and I just a quick plug don't forget if you need help 988 um, is the number for uh, suicide prevention. Yeah. Yes. Please reach out 
And I think, um, I try to make it too. I say, I love my, my listeners all the time. Cause it's like, I wouldn't be here without you. I'm yep. hopefully serving you and serving the community by bringing in people like yourself that can speak to so many amazing experiences in quilting. And like, we all come from different walks. We all come from different perspectives and, yeah. and lives, but we can all come together on this thing and Absolutely. express our love for it and our love for each other. It's like, I think sometimes people are like, oh, you can't know that you love a person. It's like, I can though, because I, I'm a human that deserves love no matter what. And, um, it should be unconditional. And yep. I want it. I want to share that with other people too. Like, okay. I want, I want you to know that I love you because you exist and for nothing else, like, and especially because you love quilting, but yes. <laughs> you know, right. it's, it's important to me. And, and yeah. my husband's in a master's degree for counseling. And so all these studies mm. that he's like reading and these academic papers and these books and all these things, everything points to the strength of community and yeah. that individual therapy is great. But if you have a strong grounded community of people, whether it's three people or 10 people or one, even just one other person that that loves you unconditionally, that supports you and has your back and you feel safe with them. That is so much more like that increases the, the amount of growth that can happen in a yeah. person versus only, only one-on-one -on -one therapy. Yep. So if you have, and sometimes even a, a strong community, and I'm not advocating for replacing therapy with anything. Cause I think <laughs> that it is so important. And, yes. um, and I'm very vocal about my stance on that. So, uh, if you don't like it, then I'm not sorry. Um, but just the, that community and knowing that you have a place to belong is yeah. so strong and that can have so many therapeutic benefits. And, and totally. so I'm with you. I think yep. it's so important and yeah, even your friends tell your stupid friends, you love them because <laughs> like just the thought that there's like people, I might get emotional. Oh my God. Um, that there's like just random people that you come across in your life that just choose to love you, even though they don't have to. And like, maybe you've done things that maybe make them not want to sometimes, but they still choose it anyway. Like that is so magical. <laughs> yeah. It's so magical. It so, it woo. Is. And it's, it's, I love, I love giving and getting hugs. And mm -hmm. so, you know, even at QuilCon, yes, I was wearing a mask, but like, I still had the green dot because I wanted, and for those who don't go to cool con or don't know, like you can yeah. choose, you know, a green dot. If you want to have hugs, you can do orange dot. If you're like, you know, like yes. fist bump or elbow bump yeah. or, you know, whatever. And then red is like, no, don't touch me. No, mm -hmm. no physical contact. Totally cool. Understand. Yeah. But like, I definitely wore a green dot because yes, I still want the hugs, even <laughs> though I'm wearing a mask, I still want the hugs. I still yeah. want to be able to, to be close and, and just, you know, support each other. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I love that. I yeah. That <laughs> it, it makes perfect sense. I, and uh, same thing. I wore a green doc. So I'm like, I'm going to yeah. hug the shit out of everybody I come across if yes. they want to. Yes. Obviously I respect people's space and, um, but so I feel like so many people had green dots and mm -hmm. definitely the people I hugged had green dots, but, um, and even if you don't want to be touched, like you can still make connections with each yes. other and maybe that, comes out of getting to know a person and then you can have that experience but like obviously not everybody enjoys it so it's okay anyway yeah. but yeah I feel like that like getting to know somebody like on a podcast like this and talking to them or even just like messaging back back and forth in Instagram and feeling like you have this connection but then actually getting to like solidify it in person like face to face yeah. is so cool that it was is. like the best I mean, beyond like all the cool fabric and all the cool booths and the cool <laughs> quilts and everything, like just that the human connection piece was just mm -hmm. so amazing. Yep. And I know not Community everybody makes it happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I know not everybody can go to quilt con. So I'm like, I feel bad. Like if people are, if this is making FOMO worse, but like <laughs> find local quilt shows. I mean, yeah. if you have a guild or a local, you know, friends that quilt or you know, there's other places you can go experience that, like 
camaraderie and that togetherness. And well, in a and I also had somebody mention, somebody left a comment on my um, QuiltCon video. They were like, thank you so much for going live at QuiltCon. And I, I did such a horrible job because it was literally <laughs> like the hour before QuiltCon closed on that oh. Sunday. And I was like <laughs> running through with my gimbal being like, look at this, look at that. Like yeah. horrible job. But um, all the content creators, she, she was thanking all the content creators out there because through all of our videos, we were, yeah. she saw other quilts that she didn't see in, you know, somebody else's video. And so yeah. she said that she's not able to go to quilt shows, but like having people take her through virtually, like yeah. makes a huge difference in her world. And so yeah. that's why I try to go live a lot of times from quilt shows, because I want to mm -hmm. be able to show them off and, you know, make them accessible for those who, who aren't able to make them. Yeah. No, I love that. And, and I love that we have the, the ability to do that for other people. We yep. can give them that experience without yep. them feeling like, well, I can't go. So I guess I'm never going to see that. It's like, no, you can, yeah. cause I'm going to show you. And yeah. um, it was so funny. Cause I like talking about your gimbal. I'm like, okay, my gimbal's broken. And um, <laughs> like, so that reminds me, I need to fix it. And then um, my husband was like, are you going to try to record while you're there? Are you going to like try to interview people or whatever? And I was like, I feel like I'm going to be so starstruck the entire time that I won't be able to be a normal human. And I was <laughs> right because I know myself. So I feel like maybe yeah. next year I can try to pull something off. But like, yeah. I think I just needed to get that first one under my belt. So I like know what I'm going into and I'm still yes. going to be starstruck because I'm meeting more and more new and amazing people that I haven't met in person yet. And it's honestly funny. Cause I feel like a lot of quilters have a lot of connections that they don't really know about or like think right. about. So I think it's, I think it's more prevalent than we know it. We just, it just doesn't get brought up to the surface a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, obviously we're talking, we're all talking about quilting and fabric and yeah. sewing and all that stuff. So that's like, obviously our main connection, but yeah, <laughs> just knowing like we both have this kind of like techie educational yep. background and your current life, I guess. But, um, so yeah, that's, that's, it's been really cool to get to know you and, and thank you yeah. for sharing everything you did about your journey and about, you know, just everything quilt shows and I'm so excited and, um, so if people haven't found your YouTube yet or don't know where to find you online, how can they get to you? Yeah, so you can find me over on YouTube, Off Kilter Crafter Ian. Um, it's been fun to type my name into uh, YouTube and see it like moving up the ranks. <laughs> like the, the, the less you're typing in, the easier it is to find me now, which is great. The algorithm is working great in that regards. But anyways... Off Kilter Crafter Ian on uh, YouTube. You can also find me on Instagram, Off Kilter Crafter Ian there as well. Um, I have a Facebook, but I don't, like, I'm so bad about social media. I've, <laughs> like, focused in on YouTube and Instagram. And even on Instagram, I'm not even really posting all that much. So, yeah, it, it, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Well, at least people know how they can find your yeah. content and you can get to your YouTube from your Instagram and vice yes. versa. So, yep. so. That's Absolutely. great. And I'll put links in the show notes to your Instagram and your YouTube so people can find you easy. Awesome. And otherwise, like, we'll just be looking out for your projects, your so longs. And um, we're excited to, to, you know, welcome you to your new home and hopefully, like, be along the journey of you settling in and finding yeah, your sojo in that space. Oh my gosh. I, there's <laughs> definitely going to be some videos of the journey of yeah. getting, getting to my location and, and all of that. So okay. stay tuned for a lot of moving videos and, uh, yeah. and moving vlogs and all that kind of stuff. But thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. It's been great getting to know you and, and chatting with you. Great. Yeah. Thanks. I'm glad to know that I have another Taylor Swift person that I can talk about stuff with. <laughs> Swifty right here. You yes. got me. <laughs> yeah. I'm always down to talk about Taylor Swift. <laughs> awesome. Love it. I may text you and be like, oh my God, I just heard this again. And this has a new meaning for me. Yeah. Right. I know. I mean, I, I warned, I warned everybody on Instagram, but it was going to be a hot minute before I let it go. So it's fair. It's fair. this is just it's... more of that. So, yep. Awesome. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll chat soon. Okay. Thanks. All right, dudes, it's June. It's time to go. We're going to get to a thousand subscribers in YouTube because you know what? As soon as we do, 
I'm doing a huge merch giveaway. The winner of the giveaway will receive $100 to spend in the merch shop how they choose. Yeah, I know. Um, so let's get subscribing. If you know somebody who you think might like the show, please ask them to subscribe. If you're a listener over on the podcast platforms and you have not joined on YouTube yet, please head on over there and subscribe to the show on YouTube. Also, sometimes quilters show off really cool stuff and I want you to be able to see it. So head to the YouTube, click that subscribe button, click the little bell so you get notified when new episodes are released and let's get this party going.